Hello everyone, I'm Constance Miller and welcome to my Dissociative Identity Disorder. I think I stated this in the last episode that I did. Um, Constance is not an alternate personality in my system. I am a trans woman. And I just want to get that out in the open and just let everyone be aware that Constance is the host of a system that I not named. Um, there are other people with DID that have names for their systems and It seemingly fits with each of them, uh, from what I know. And, I mean, there isn't many that I know. Um, but, yeah, it's it's not something that I, I've really pondered much on. And especially as of late, since my DID episodes haven't been that frequent. Um... Since coming out as trans, um, I've seen a huge, huge reduction in DID episodes or switching personalities. And I don't know if it's just because my mind is healing to a degree that has never happened before. Uh, however, you know, um, I don't expect it to go away. I don't expect my alters to disappear entirely. Some of them have in the past before coming out as trans. And it could be that they're just sleeping and are content to do so. I mean, who knows? So, so coming up with a name for my system and it, it's really interesting because now that I've come out as a trans woman, pronouns are very, very important. And using pronouns with a DID system is equally as important. So using we, they, their is pretty essential and and that is something that really takes getting used to and I think about that especially with the people that I'm surrounded by that are so familiar with me before Constance using the correct pronoun she and her sometimes can propose a challenge and I am forgiving to a degree. It is now getting to the point that even though I might have to correct somebody here and there, it's not out of spite or anger or frustration. It's out of wanting the respect of my gender identity. So I, I, I put that into terms with a DID system and realize it's also important to be known as we because there's so many different parts of Constance. And I'm really, really happy to have met a system. Um, tetradecahedron, uh, through myopia inner sight, and being introduced to their system has been such a rewarding experience. And, and I, I 
I feel an absolute kinship to their system. And it's, if anybody knows me, you know that I'm a really good judge of character for the most part. For the most part, <laughs> I won't go into past specifics about some of my poor choices in, in men. Um, however, um, overall, I, I do have a good sense of of knowing genuine people when I run across them. And this system is just remarkable and i won't go into many specifics um because i don't want to impede upon their privacy other than you know obviously you know the name of their system and you know whatnot um that's public knowledge but Everything that I've, I've been able to glean from them has been so rewarding. And they are, um, sorry, I'm putting up notes because I'm horrible about rambling. Um, they are Buddhist in nature. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. That is going to stick with me for a very, very, very long time. Nam ho renge kyo. Oh, it, it, it's just, it, it has a vibe to it. And I'm not Buddhist. Um, I'm actually Wiccan. Um, so I, I don't look down on any formal religion or spiritual practice. Everybody's entitled to their own beliefs. Um, and that's something I respect. And it's not that I can't take something from another person's spiritual beliefs. And Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and I've been singing that in various tones and voices all day today. And it's beautiful. And, and I'm very, very, very much inspired to do a painting for them. And I have something in my head. I've done a little bit of research. Um, as far as the meaning and the history of Nami Oho Renge Kyo. Um, so, um, I hope they're receptive. Um, and this is going to be, hopefully, well, I was intending it to be a surprise to them, but obviously because of this video, um, that I'm sure they're going to watch, um, like I said, I hope they're going to be receptive. They're appreciative of my art and my talent. And I would just love to do this for them. So I'm really excited to get started on that. Hopefully in the next few days, um, my work schedule is kind of picked up a little bit. And um, I don't want to lose the focus of the drive for my art. So, I, after I'm done with this, I probably will probably get started on that right away. So, yes, Tetsudekahedron, yay! I love getting to know you all so much, so very much. It's a highlight, truly a highlight. So, um... To actually talk about my DID, um, there hasn't really been a whole lot to talk about. Like I said, my episodes have been depleted since coming out as trans. Um, however, yesterday, um, 
I did have um, a, a very weird bout with switching personalities. And I'm not entirely sure everybody that came out uh, came out to play. <laughs> um, because I get total amnesia when that happens. I know that's not the same with everybody in their experiences with DID. However, with me, I, I don't recall anything. Um, my alters somewhat converse with each other, apparently. They know things about each other that I don't. So everything that I hear is through Derek. And, and what he experiences and what he sees and hears. Um, on occasion, um, an altar will leave a note. And that is the only form of communication that they have with me. So it's in physical form. And for instance, um, I have been trying to quit smoking. Um, and I have been trying. So apparently last night I switched and one of my alters by the name of Gordon um, decided that he wanted to have a cigarette. Um, the altars are forbidden to leave our apartments unless supervised. And uh, at one point we had an alarm on our door um, that would go off as a security measure um, in case one of them decided that they wanted to take off. And it's been known to happen. Uh, so it's not just a random fly by the seat of our pants decision to do that. And Gordon apparently took off last night by foot, walked to our local gas station, which is roughly about two and a half city blocks, roughly. I'm a bad judge of distance. Um, and bought a pack of cigarettes. Um, and thankfully he used my debit card and not Derek's, um, that would have been infuriating to him because he doesn't like the fact that I smoke. Um, on the other hand, um, so when I came to, when I emerged, um, after switching, Mind you, switching takes a lot out of me. Emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, so it's, it's, it takes a lot for me to recover because that is lost time that I don't get back. So I woke up and I look over and see a pack of cigarettes sitting on the TV stand with a note. Um, oh, dang it. Uh, a note. I thought of you, G. Um, not my handwriting. Um, yeah, so I've got a pack of cigarettes to finish. Um, some would be like, why don't you just throw them away? Uh, well, you know, that's my money that he used. <laughs> and I'm not going to throw away money because it's very valuable. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of what's been going on with my dissociative identity disorder. Um... I haven't uh, really talked too much about anything else that might have happened yesterday with Derek. Um, and he hasn't brought up anything. So I, nothing really consequential has happened. Um, 
usually, uh, depending on which altar fronts, there could be a funny little story or something or other. Um, my altars are apparently really funny, and I am inherently not. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Um, if any of you have questions about dissociative identity disorder, um, what it's like for my system that doesn't have a name yet, um, feel free to ask in the comments below. Um, I, I'm open to talking about it. Um, and frankly, all the trauma that surrounds it. Um, I, one important thing about therapy and going through therapy and dealing with my traumas that I've had that have caused this is it's important to me to be open and honest about how everything has happened and why it's happened. And I want to do that to help educate other people that may know somebody with DID or somebody that's going through DID if they're willing and open. And in some cases, that's not going to be the case. There are some people with DID that are easily triggered in talking uh, or about or hearing about certain things. For instance, myself, it's really hard. Oh, let me. Mm. I can't put it that way. There is a movie that entailed. Um, a very graphic scene of sexual assault and that was very triggering for me and anything that sort of entails that is very difficult for me. Um, there are aspects of uh, say for instance The Handmaid's Tale that I just I had to tune out because it probably would have triggered me. Um, so I get that. I understand that. So I just, I just want to be that open person to, to somebody who is willing to receive the information that I have and the experiences that I've been going through and, and hopefully in some way be a ray of light in somebody's life or in somebody's lives, depending on the situation. So with all that being said, I've taken up a lot of time. So do take care of yourselves and each other. Spread love as much as possible. I just, yeah. <laughs> love and light to you all.